Ah, oh, okay, day there guys, Mr. Oz Adventure here once more. Today I've got a special treat for you, something a little bit different. I am here in Mudrabar at the moment. Mudrabar is a suburb of the Gold Coast and right beside the Pacific Motorway in the heart of it all, but it is at the foothills of the Gold Coast hinterland. We are heading today up to Springbrook National Park and I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of some of the fantastic sights up there. Stay tuned. It's going to be good. One of the beauties of Springbrook National Park, for motorcyclists anyway, is the road leading up to it and the road leading away from it on the other side. It is absolutely stunning motorcycling. They're absolutely brilliant. Fairly smooth mostly and a series of absolutely gorgeous curves. You do have to be careful of cars like that that cross the, the lanes. This road is packed full of tourists. If you are riding up here in the opposite direction of all the tourists coming the other way and checking out all the scenery, then it can be quite dangerous. Much better to get up here nice and early when all you've got is other motorcyclists and cyclists generally to contend with. The Springwood National Park is not all about motorcycling, of course. It is a World Heritage listed national park and absolutely stunning. It is a place I like to come to to relax and unwind, whether it be riding these spectacular roads or coming up for a, a, a bushwalk amongst the waterfalls and to check out the amazing scenery from the top. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some footage from when I was up here on a bit of a hike with a friend uh, a while back. We came up here just after uh, a week of solid storms and this road was absolutely hell. I did want to ride up but I was glad I didn't because it was absolutely covered with debris. The whole road was just a mess. There's no way I would have liked to have ridden that day. I didn't get any footage of the road itself, but I did get some footage of us driving through the middle of a tree which had fallen across the road and taken out some power lines, which I'll show you to you right now. Power lines, all tangled up in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we came up after the storms was because the waterfalls were absolutely pumping. We wanted to see the waterfalls in full flight. But the main waterfall that we that we go to, Pearlingbrook Falls, that was closed due to landslides and the danger of uh, rushing water and everything like that. It's a bit dangerous to have it open when the conditions are like that. But we were able to do another circuit nearby which was equally as stunning. It's called the Twin Falls Circuit. And I'm going to show you a little bit of footage from that while I tell you some of the history, the geography and features of Springbrook National Park. There are three sections to Springbrook National Park. There is the Mount Kugel section on the southeasterly side of the plateau, which is down near Corumban Valley. And there is Natural Arch, which is in the Namapar Valley on the southwestern side of the plateau but I am dealing today primarily with the plateau itself and I will take you to some of the other places in different parts of Springbrook National Park another time in a series of videos which I have planned. So the Springbrook Plateau itself is around about a thousand meters high so not terribly high but it is one of the highest peaks in the region. So Springbrook makes up the outer edge of an old extinct shield volcano which Mount Warning in northern New South Wales is the centre of. All of the mountains around this whole region were formed by the volcano which would have stretched miles out into the Pacific Ocean at that stage. The Australian coastline along the east coast here would look vastly different back then. When we came up here these waterfalls here were absolutely pumping during that storm. Most of the time though there's no water flowing over there at all, particularly this time of year as it is the dry season. Now if you saw my video where um, the tow truck was pulling the motorcycle up a cliff that was right here on this corner, I think the bike just came in far too hot and this is a one lane area, see the car just coming out there? I think a car was coming out, they didn't slow down sufficiently to allow for that, 
the probability of that. And they had to go around the car and went straight off the side there. I don't know the facts of it all, but that is what I am assuming happened. Luckily the rider was okay. The bike would have definitely been a ride-off. One of the things I love about the Gold Coast is that this is only five minutes from the city. The twisty hills start five minutes from the Pacific Motorway, which flows through all the western suburbs of the Gold Coast. Being just a thin coastal strip of a city, these hills are only 20 minutes from the beach. Now if I was out for a nice ride today and I wanted to do a circuit of the area, I would normally turn right here and go over Pine Creek Road into Numanbar Valley and that would take me onwards to wherever I wanted to go. Up here is a dead end, but this is where I'm taking you today to show you a little bit more of the Springbrook National Park. We've got this nice little one lane section here where the road splits. So the Springbrook Plateau, aside from having national parks all over it, is home to farming communities, bed and breakfasts, and uh, local cafes and restaurants and things like that. It's not overly built up. It is still fairly rural and secluded. We've got a nice look out here. I have stopped there before and you can see, I'll stop again quickly. Let's just get a run down here, show you the views. Look at that. You can see the whole Pacific Ocean there, the whole city of the Gold Coast. Service Paradise skyline and Broadbeach skyline behind it. You can see right up to the northernmost parts of the beachfront of the Gold Coast. There's another nice road going over there, Mount Tomahawk's featured in a lot of my videos. It's a, another one of my favourite roads to ride. Let's continue on, let's continue on. Fudge shop, if you like fudge. Only 25 minutes from Mudra Bar. We are now turning left into the Guangarella picnic area where Pearlingbrook Falls are situated. This is the first set of falls that we came to where we attempted to do the walk, but uh, we were thwarted in our plans by the weather as the track was closed. Pearlingbrook Falls is definitely the most popular place that people come to when they visit Springbrook. It's the first port of call when you first get up here, so naturally people just turn into here but it's also the highest waterfall around. Burlingbrook Falls is over 100 metres tall. Absolutely sensationally spectacular. Although we didn't get to do it on this trip, I have done it a few other times and I have filmed it for you. I'll take you on now to Twin Falls, which we actually did when the falls were pumping after all the rains. The Canyon Lookout is where we're headed, four kilometres off the road. That is where the Twin Falls circuit starts from. Right now we're crossing Purling Brook, which that tiny little trickle there turns into a massive 100 metre drop of a waterfall. When it's in flood, there's water going across that road there and you can't get through, you have to take another road around. What have we got here? A scrub turkey in the road. Absolutely full of scrub turkeys up here, otherwise known as bush turkeys. So we are here now at the Twin Falls circuit, the Canyon Lookout someone over here taking photos so I will be respectful of that and I will not ride my motorbike onto the lookout there as I've seen other people do. <laughs> Some other motor vloggers who I will not name right now. Let's go and have a look shall we? Have a look at that. In terms of human history there's plenty of evidence there suggesting that Indigenous Australians lived here at Springbrook for thousands of years before white settlement. The first Europeans to explore the area were surveyors in 1863 that were sent to survey the border between Queensland and New South Wales. As Queensland was becoming its own state at that stage and separating from New South Wales. In the coming decades, the next Europeans to settle into the area were the timber getters who called the Springbrook Plateau the land of tall timber. This was up until 1906 when the plateau's status as a timber reserve was revoked and the area was opened up for agricultural use. The first section of Springbrook Plateau to be declared National Park happened in 1937 at the canyon with Twin Falls Lookout in there. And over the years, several other sections opened up as their own little national parks. In the decades to come, they all continued as their own separate national parks until 1991 when they were all joined together and formed Springbrook National Park, which was then World Heritage listed in 1994. The path goes underneath the waterfall. I'm going to get wet. Ah! So 
right now we're only 28 kilometers from Madrabah and we're in the thick of Springbrook Plateau. So here we go, here's the tree that we, we, we drove under, I think. The one that had taken down the power line. You do need to be careful when you're riding up here during the summer months because the roads do get quite moist and damp in the wet season and there's quite a lot of debris all over the road and there's a lot of mossy green slimy stuff on some of the corners where the sun just doesn't get to ever. So here we are now arriving at the Festival Lookout and it is called Festival Lookout for very good reason. As you can see in the footage here that I have provided from previous trips it is an absolutely breathtaking view over the whole Tweed Valley from up here. You can see right down to Byron Bay, Mount Morning. You can see the Tweed River meandering its way through Willembar and other sort of towns down below and all the sugarcane fields. It's a glorious little place to come to. So it's only 350 metre walk down the track and 300 metres down the track along the way is a grove of Antarctic beech trees which uh, pretty rare and endangered and this is the most northerly stand of them in the world. They're like a remnant from the dinosaur age. They're just prehistoric. They're amazing trees. It's a cool little walk through there. It's just really brilliant. It's, it's like going into some sort of fairyland. So even though we're only 30 kilometers roughly from the Gold Coast suburbs, you feel like you're in another world. You miles from all the stress of city living and traffic and everything like that. It doesn't take long to get here, but it's like stepping back into another time. Due to the change in elevation up here, it is somewhat colder than the Gold Coast itself at sea level. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, it is always fairly cool up here. Even in summer, you come up here and it's just so refreshing and nice to get away from the heat of it all in uh, the Antarctic beach tree area back there at the best of all lookout when you're walking through there even on days when it's 30 degrees Celsius down on the Gold Coast it can be under 20 up in there and you need to rug up and put extra clothing on for sure so even if it is a stinking hot day you need to bring extra clothing up here because it does get cold in winter you regularly get minus temperatures up here and frosts and everything whereas on the Gold Coast it just doesn't happen You've got some of the best hiking trails in the region up here. There's just so many trails you can walk for days and days and days. You can camp up the top of the mountains. I'm here at Apple Tree Park now where there is a trail just down there. It takes you all the way down into Numbabar Valley. Yeah, so Apple Tree Park here is a joining point for the Great Walk where you can walk for days throughout this region. You can walk from the Gold Coast up into here. You cross over the road there and then you go down into Numbar Valley. All right, well, I'm heading back down now off the mountain and I'll be back to the Gold Coast in another 20 minutes or so. As always, thanks for watching, guys. You've been awesome to take along on this little journey with me. I haven't even noticed you hanging off the back of my bike and tagging along. It's been great. I hope you enjoyed the trip. I hope you enjoyed our little hike through the rainforest and the spectacular scenery of Springbrook National Park. It's only a very brief tour, but I just wanted to give a little bit of a tour of Springbrook because a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people come to visit the Gold Coast and they don't even come up this far. They don't even realise that there's so much wonder and beauty up in the hills only 20 minutes or so from the sprawling metropolis that is the Gold Coast city. It is the green behind the gold and it is well worth seeing. Thanks again guys. I will see you in the next video.